Hey, muchachos and muchachas, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk to you about how to draw a picture of a set of linear equations. There's three equations in three unknowns, and there's the answer, by the way. We'll figure that out in a minute in MATLAB, but just so you know where we're headed. Now, the point I want to make here is that for two variable and three variable problems, you can draw a picture of the answer. If you have a two variable problem, say x and y, the solution is in two dimensions, x and y. And those two equations can be written as straight lines. And you plot them on the axes, and where those lines cross, that's the solution. In 3D, it works the same way, only now instead of lines, they are planes. But they're flat. They're zero, they're, they're, there's no curvature. There's zero curvature. Linear equations give you straight lines, or the multidimensional equivalent of straight lines. Then when, with this set of equations, with that answer, what we're trying to find is the combination of x, y, and z that makes all three, three of these true. That means if we put the same value of x, y, and z into all three equations, it satisfies all three equations. That means everything on the left side equals whatever's on the right side. So if it's the same x, y, and z for every equation, that, mean, that means there must be one point in three space, x, y, and z, where all three of those planes cross, and there is. So we're going to go to MATLAB in a second here, and all we got to do now is write these out in some way that we can plug into MATLAB. Now I'm going to rewrite these equations so that x and y are the independent variables. They can be whatever we want, and that z is the dependent variable. Now there's nothing magic about z. I could write them so that other variables were dependent variables if we wanted to, but it's most familiar if z is the, the thing we're calculating. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So for this equation, z, 1 half 1 minus x minus y, I'll call that equation z1. z2 is going to be 3 minus x minus 2y. And z3 is going to be 2x plus y minus 3. So let's quit talking here. Let's go to MATLAB and draw some pictures. Okay, here we are in MATLAB. Let's go ahead and solve this problem in two steps. First, let's write out the matrix equations and just solve them numerically to make sure that the number on the board is correct, for the numbers I have there. So let's start by making a matrix called A that'll have nine elements in it, three by three, and those elements are just the coefficients of the equations. And those coefficients can be separated by commas, and then each row is separated by a semicolon. And then, whoops, and row three here. There, close that, and I'm going to show this on the screen. There it is. Next thing I need is the vector, and I'll just call that B. And these will all be separated by semicolons since they're different rows. And then just to be sure here. OK, good. Though That's the solution I had written on the board. So let's clear the screen and clear the workspace. So the first thing to do is let's define a range of x that's uh, broad enough to include the solution. Go from minus 2 to 2 in steps of 0.2. And just for ease, I'm going to make y have the same range as x. You can see over here that there's 21 numbers in each of those vectors. Now the reason there's 21 and not 20 is you've got to remember 0 is in there as well. Now this is OK, except in order to make a plot in three dimensions, x and y shouldn't be vectors as they are now. They should be matrices. They should be matrices that are 21 by 21, because I'm going to have to define z across all the possible values of both x and y. Well, you could write some code to do it, but MATLAB being MATLAB, somebody's already beat us to it. And there's this really handy command oops, called MeshGrid. that does it for you. And watch this. See now, 
capital X and capital Y are 21 by 21. And just to remind you, capital X and capital Y are different variables than X and Y because MATLAB is case sensitive. So all I've got to do now is define three different functions, and I'm going to call them Z1, Z2, and Z3, of capital X and capital Y, and those will define the three planes that correspond to that set of equations we're solving. So here's Z1. And you can see that Z1 is also a 21 by 21 matrix. So here's Z2 now. And Z3. All right, so all we got to do now is plot. There are a couple of different MATLAB commands that will plot in 3D, but I'm going to use one called surf for surface plots. So type that in. And there it is. Well, that doesn't look right, does it? Well, it's actually OK. If we look, so you just look at it from another direction. It's, it really is a plane there. See, it looks like a line when you look at it on edge. So it is truly a plane. Well, that's good news. That's what we want. The only problem is, let's move that down. So the problem right now is there's only one surface on there, and I want three of them. Well, all we got to do is I'm going to move that off to the side here. And I'm going to call that back up. And before I can execute to add, to add another surface, I'm going to type in hold on. What hold does is tells uh, MATLAB, I want to put some more stuff on that plot. So when another when I make another command, don't open a new figure. Put the new entity on the figure that's already there. So I'm going to hold, call back the surface command. Do that. You can see here, there's another surface. And you can see these are color coded with height. I'm going to change that here in a minute. Let me pull that off to the side here. And let's just do this one more time. And there's the third surface. And maybe let's make that a little bigger so it's easier to look at. Now, do we know which one of these is x and the, the horizontal axis is x and which one's y? I don't know. Let's do this. OK, so x label puts a label on the x-axis. Guess what y label does? And for reasons of good form, let's put z label on there as well. And let's just make sure that's, yeah, see there's the x and there's the y. So now we know which axis is which. The only other problem we got now is this is, this is kind of hard to look at because uh, the, the coloring uh, kind of blends together. Let's go ahead and make each of these surfaces a different color. OK, so let's just take that one, whichever one that is. Pulls up the property inspector. Let's make that one bright yellow. Oh, there it is. Well, that's pretty handy. Let's make this one some other color, about red. OK, now it's real easy to see. And let's just make this one some other color, how about, I don't really like green, but it'll be easy to see. There we go. Kind of a gnarly color, but there it is. Now, let's turn that off and see this little, see as I go over here, that little uh, bunch of commands that pops up. I'm going to click that so I can rotate. So if I look. If there's a solution to this to a set of matrix equations and three variables, there has to be a point where all three planes cross one another. Now when two planes cross, it's going to be a line, a straight line. But three planes can only cross in a at a point as long as there are actually three independent planes. And so that's it right there. See where the yellow, the green and the red all come together at that one point. Let's see if I can zoom in here. See, I'll zoom in just a little bit. There we go. At that point right there, that's where all of the three planes cross. And that's the solution to this ma set of matrix equations, this, this set of linear equations. That point right there, let me turn that off again, let me get my pointer back. That point right there. That's the point that we calculated 
using the uh, matrix functions in MATLAB, and that's what it looks like graphically. So I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.